For this story, we're in Brandon, at the back of Bob's Convenience Store, where we found a pretty unique business, Lake Country Wines. Mike Cleary is the owner and chief vintner. The dictionary gives two definitions for vintner, a wine merchant and a wine maker. I think Mike fits both definitions. There's a lot of home winemakers in the area. There are people that want to buy kits and equipment, and I service all of them. But the thing that I offer here that's really unique to the area is in-store winemaking. So you as a customer can come in the store, you can select a box of juice off the shelf, and you can actually use my equipment to make the wine. I do the work and the uh, transfer steps and those type of things for you. You come back four weeks later and you bottle your wine like Jim and Judy are doing right now. So no mess at home. You don't have to buy any equipment. It's a fun activity for couples, uh, for groups, uh, girls at the lake, weekends, uh, any type of thing that you can think of like that. Okay. So this kit is an Orchard Breezen Cranberry Chianti which means it's a Chianti wine with a cranberry flavoring. And each of these kits uh, contain a grape juice pack. This happens to be about a gallon of Chianti wine juice. This is the cranberry flavoring. And then in addition to that, there are various chemicals. And the chemicals consist of, the first thing, today we're going to use the grape juice. And we're going to mix bentonite in the grape juice. Bentonite's a type of volcanic clay. And it's positively charged and it's a fining agent, which means it takes some of the suspended particles out of the wine, and takes them to the bottom and sits at the bottom then as sediment. We're going to actually start the wine today in one of these fermenting buckets. That's a 7.8 seven gallon bucket. We're going to end up filling it up to the six gallon mark and leaving some headroom here for uh, foaming while the wine ferments. So we'll put the bentonite in the, in the grape juice and we'll also add yeast. And that's all we're going to do today. So the first thing we want to do is we want to put some water in the fermenting bucket. I do not use city water here because it has chlorine in it. If you can taste something in your water, it's likely you'll taste it in the wine. Then we add the wine juice. This juice is concentrated, so one gallon of juice plus five gallons of water will yield us six gallons of wine. Now we're going to take a sample of the mix and we're going to take a hydrometer reading. Uh, hydrometer reading at the front end will tell us how much sugar and other suspended solids are in the mix and what the potential alcohol content is going to be. The winemaking process is yeast turning sugar into alcohol, and so this will tell us how much sugar is in the beginning mix. Excuse me, Jim. So do you ever have to adjust it? Uh, never. I never do. These kits come pretty well adjusted. You need to have you need to have a certain level of sugar even to start it. Too much sugar, the yeast won't be able to handle it. So it's important to get it in the right range. Sure. 0.06 is about 8.4 percent alcohol, potential alcohol content, but we're going to then add down the road, we're going to add that flavor pack to it, and at that point in time it'll take the alcohol percent down because you're diluting it and you're adding more sugar. It'll end up, this, this batch of wine will end up about 5.4 percent alcohol. So we just sprinkle the yeast over the top, in this particular kit, we don't stir the yeast in, we just sprinkle it over the top. 
Then we seal up the bucket. The yeast turns the sugar to alcohol. The byproduct is carbon dioxide, and that has to come out of that bucket. So, in the old days, people would just make their wine in a crock and cover it with a tablecloth, and of course the gas could escape through the tablecloth. But we're trying to do it a little more sanitary. So we put a lid on it, it's sealed except for this hole, then we put an airlock in. And an airlock consists of, this is a three-piece device, it allows the gas to bubble out. I have potassium metabisulfate in here as a liquid, so bacteria cannot get back into it. So now it's perfectly sealed from the outside, and within 24 hours, uh, gas will start to bubble out. For two weeks then, it's going to sit in the bucket and it's going to ferment. After two weeks, it's wine. Drinkable at that point in time if you want to, but it's going to be pretty cloudy. It's still have a lot of sediment in it. So at that point in time, we'll transfer it out of the bucket. Let me set this down. We'll transfer it out of the bucket into a glass carboy. This is a six gallon glass carboy. So we'll fill it right up to the top. We'll mix in the cranberry flavoring at that point in time. We'll put sulfite in the mix. Sulfite uh, will stop the fermentation process if it hasn't already, prevent it from re-fermenting. We'll put in potassium sorbate, which acts as a preservative. And then we have two other fining or clearing agents. Uh, one is, uh, both of these are made from fish parts, either the, the, the skeleton structure or, or the bladders of fish. And how they ever figured out how to use that, I'll never know. But these are used in these kits to help clear the, clear the wine. Two weeks in the, in the fermenting, uh, or I'm sorry, in the glass carboy, and it's ready to bottle. So it's a very quick process. Uh, four weeks from start to finish for most of these kits and uh, the, that's a huge advantage if you're doing your own country wines, your own grapes or your own uh, uh, pumpkin or carrots or whatever it takes months and months for the wine to clear become you know clear enough to, that you'd want to drink it. If you're interested in making your own wine but haven't done it before Mike has all the equipment you'll need. Things like this bottle sanitizer that are so convenient and easy to use. That way you can try winemaking without all the upfront expense. Uh, one of the chemicals that we use in the winemaking process is potassium metabisulfate or potassium sorbate. So this is, this is a variation of that and it's a universal sanitizer. So the bottle filling process is pretty automated. Uh, takes 17 seconds to fill a bottle and it stops automatically at the right level. The next step now that they're done with this is to uh, do the corking. We use real corks rather than synthetic corks. They're easier to compress and you need to compress them to get them into the bottle. And I think they hold up better over time. We ask the customer to keep the bottle upright for 48 hours. That allows that cork to, to, uh, to expand and, and make a tight seal on the bottle and then after 48 hours, lay the bottles on their side. You want to keep the corks wet over time so they don't dry out and so oxygen cannot get into your wine. Next step is going to be to actually heat shrink these down onto the bottles. But the reason we put these foils on top is, first of all, it keeps the cork clean. And then also it keeps the cork from drying out 
too fast. Holds, helps hold the moisture in. And lastly, it looks good. The, the big label is one that came with the kit and it just basically tells you what the varietal is. It's, a, it's an Australia Shiraz Cabernet Petit Verdot. So if that's all that's on there, you don't know when you bottle it. Yeah. So the additional label, it's bottled in September of this year. This is 14.6% alcohol and exclusively handcrafted Lake Country Wines in Brandon by Jim Jansen. It should say Jim and Judy, but... Uh -huh. <laughs> Jim did most of the work. <laughs> He's the guy with the purple feet, right? <laughs> we have the ability here in the store to actually create custom labels. So, so people can bring in a picture, a JPEG of, uh, like for example, in the weddings, it's usually their engagement picture, uh, the, the couple's picture. We put down a label and then we add whatever uh, message they want on the label. So this morning I went on the internet and I found I found these on somebody's website, <laughs> uh, these pictures, and so I was able to copy them off the website and put them on labels and uh, create some, uh, some special wine here. When all costs are totaled, including new bottles and Mike's fee, a kit that produces 30 bottles of wine averages about five to six dollars per bottle. Lake Country Wines offers a wide variety of fruit and traditional wine kits, specialty drink kits, and beer making kits. If you want to make your wine at home, Mike has all the supplies you'll need, including how-to books. Mike's wine looks good, but I'm wondering, how does it taste? Absolutely delicious.